All right, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this workshop with Temple City Council for July 6, 2023. Um, let's just hop right in. It doesn't look like we have anybody has signed up for public comments. So we'll move on to um, discuss if maybe needed any regular meeting uh, items, both consent and regular agenda. Council, anything anybody needs to talk about? And oh, Mike, welcome. We see you up there. If you're on mute. Yeah. You're on mute if you're speaking. It's taking that long for the words to make across time. <laughs> it looked like he was speaking. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. yeah. We'll let him catch up. Um is he in a plane or somewhere. Do they see the dollar? Is that the big friend? No, he's just in England. Yeah, it's never taken six or seven hours. No, yeah, yeah, six, six or seven. Okay, let's bring it back. We are. My word. So, anything on the agenda that we need to speak about, either council or staff? Anything? Make something else. Nothing. <laughs> Otherwise, you're about to get a budget presentation. You might want to come up with. <laughs> this is Brent's shining love. This is not it. You know where the guinea pigs. Oh, of course. Right. Okay. All right. So if there's nothing, then we'll just move on. We'll just go ahead and move on to item two. We lose him. What are we doing? There's some kind of connection problem. Mm -hmm. oh. Can y'all hear me now? Oh, <laughs> no. no. Yes, Mike, we heard you loud and clear. <laughs> Can you hear us? Are, are we connected? Okay. Are you still there, Mike? It is. I'm here. All right. Do you have anything on the agenda you want to um, discuss? No, I'm good. Okay. All right. Then uh, are you ready for Apple Chief? What do we do? Yes. yes. Our virtual option not up. Thank you. Thanks, 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 yeah, I'm sorry. It is going to take a minute. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's a really I'm excellent. Not ready. I'm not ready to have a presentation. Right. Right. So you don't have it. Right. Let me just a second. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. All right. So, um, council and other staff, you know, we've got the, uh, the issue going with uh, public comments. And, you know, when, when, when can we speak and when can not? So I asked Kathy yesterday to put together a synopsis kind of 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 um, of, of, um, of this new ruling or ordinance or whatever we're going to call it. And um, I asked just, just for some uh, bullet points so that as people come in, 
um, that they can see under what authority that the city of Temple City Council is doing that. So while we're waiting on the presentation, um, so I asked Kathy to put something together, something that people can walk in, grab, read, take it home with them, etc. And so Kathy, if you don't mind kind of running through that, just so everybody will know that um, what's there, I would appreciate it. Sure. Now, Kathy, before you start, you're saying this is printed something, right? Yeah, yeah. And I'll go back to the well, here, I have some here. Yeah. I gave Liz a whole stack. So none of this is unique to Temple, all right? Or the that in other cities as well? Yes. Um, I'm not really having another challenging one. So we're, we have some issues with this. Well, some people may have some issues. Uh, <laughs> So if you recall, in December, you adopted your um, governing standards and expectations. And one of those was a discussion that we had had uh, several times regarding the public comments and meetings and time limits and topics for discussion and, and all of that. And at the end of the day, the decision was to um, limit public comments. That's the part that's not on the agenda to residents, to property owners, to um, business owners in Temple, the people who are directly affected by your decisions. Um, that the decision at the time was made to delay implementation, just to give people a chance to get ready for it. And in June, we let people know this is the last meeting under the old rule and starting next meeting, which was your last meeting, that we will start abiding by the policy that was adopted in December. So there's been some pushback uh, from some people who are not residents of Temple, challenging the reality and constitutional policy. Um, I know I had C.J. Grisham speaking at the last meeting, uh, saying that he feels like it's not a constitutional distinction, and I disagree with him uh, wholeheartedly. Uh, I think that clearly we can uh, make distinctions um, as long as those distinctions are um, reasonable and enforced equally and as long as they're not content based. So um, there, there is not a lot of case law on this. And I think the reason why there's not is because it's clear that this is a dis distinction we can make. So it's not challenged often. There is a case that's directly on point that's from Florida, but it is applying the United States Constitution, which is the same Constitution that we work under. Um, and it, looking at this exact issue and saying that, yes, that council did have the absolute right to set that distinction as long as everyone within that category is being treated equally. So they could make separate categories of residents versus non-residents as long as everyone within each category was treated the same. Um, and so that's what we've done, and I feel confident that, that the policy that you've set is um, constitutional. Um, and, and this is a policy that, that we are set to review in the, in the future. It's intended to be reviewed um, every year when we get council members on board after the uh, May election. So that will be coming. So you will be able to, at that time, decide whether it's still a policy that you want to proceed with. But I do, again, feel confident that it is constitutional, is legal. And so there is a, a fact sheet that, that we will have right by the sign-in sheets that does just kind of give the background of the policy and then a reference, some of the bullet points, some of the, the case law that's relevant to this issue particularly. Have that referred to Kathy, do we, is this going to push us in any way or any other council in any way to mandating that people give a street address that can be checked so that we know people, theoretically, people say resident, mm -hmm. you know, you get what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think on our sign-in sheet, do we ask for their actual residence address and do we just ask if they are a temple resident? Okay. Just yes or no? Okay. And, and it's kind of honor based. Um, we do ask. Well, first, the question is Are you speaking on an agenda item? Because if you recall, anyone can speak on an agenda item or in a public hearing, whether they're a resident right. or not. So there's a question Are you speaking on an agenda item? Yes or no? And then are you um, wanting to do public comments? Are you a resident, a temple, or a business well, owner? Working on getting the, a kiosk, mm -hmm. you know, an, an automated. And so it'll be directly um, connected to our mapping system. Mm -hmm. So they can put in their address 
or business address. So and it will automatically, it won't let you go any further, mm -hmm. you know, so you're, you're not yeah. eligible to speak, you know, on comments or whatever if you hear mm -hmm. from public hearing. So yes, it will be, it'll, it'll be linked to our mm -hmm. GIS system once we get that up. Okay. You know, there's been some concern with some folks about giving out their address, mm -hmm. right, for privacy reasons. Mm -hmm. um, does that then become public information? Whatever's entered into the kiosk? I mean, I, it's not generating, not generating about it would be like you went to Google or Maps or, okay. you know, Belcat mm -hmm. or whatever. And even if someone at some point has to write their address somewhere, that does not make it it's public. Be redacted. It's, yes, it would be requested through the public information. Okay. You would redact all private information. They're concerned about saying something verbal in the United States. Sure. Um, so, you know, I think of like, mm -hmm. Bobby Thompson likes to come up and, you know, normally tells us how great things are and then says, and now y'all need to go. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. if, if Bill Lattimore are on the agenda, she's a temple resident. Mm -hmm. She can still she can Okay, so she, a temple resident can mm -hmm. take their three minutes and talk about anything they want. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So and they can sign up on the agenda. Mm -hmm. Most cities, I say most, many cities, only allow comments on agenda items. Sure. So, um, so y'all didn't want to do that. Yeah, you wanted still. to let people who yeah. uh, lived in Temple or own property and were business in Temple to talk about absolutely anything. So that's why you may make that decision. Yeah. Sorry, I can't keep that in my brain. So, okay. So, Council, any questions for Kathy? Thank you for doing this. Very Thank you. Okay. Very helpful. Yeah. Thank you. Isn't that way? You know, ultimately, what you want, you want to give a citizen, if, 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 if a ruling is made like this, you want to tell them why, you want to hand them something that, other than say, because we said so, right? No, no one likes that. So, absolutely. Yeah, I think that we'll see. We'll see. You ready? Yeah. I have a presentation two. that doesn't have any malware. <laughs> so. All right. So, the second item is receive a presentation on the proposed. This will be your 2024 uh, business plan, including but not limited to an overview of the proposed 2024 annual budget this month. Thank you. And Council Member Long is very correct. This is my favorite presentation of the year. So this is um, the first uh, uh, overview of the proposed fiscal year 24 business plan, which includes um, a, our strategic plan, uh, that identifies the various goals and initiatives that we want to accomplish over the next six years, the financial plan that identifies the resources necessary to implement those projects and initiatives, the annual budget, which is the, which is the formal document that officially appropriates the upcoming fiscal year 24 uh, budget for um, purposes of complying with state law and charter requirements, and then the capital plan, which is our multi-year plan uh, regarding capital improvement uh, programs. The reason that we uh, present the uh, budget in the contact <laughs> six center business plan is so that we're not asking you to look at something, one piece of the puzzle at a time, but rather you're able to see the entire picture um, and understand how all of the pieces fit together uh, for the uh, furtherance of your goal um, to accomplish Temple as a place that you love to call home and that uh, your organization provides exceptional service without exception. Um, we also have adopted organizational values, including uh, commitment, innovation, integrity, accountability, and collaboration. And you all have identified through your strategic plan five focus areas high-performing organization, communication and collaboration, places and spaces, smart growth, and public safety. Within those five public, or within those five uh, focus areas, we have a total of 10 strategic goals that have been identified within the strategic plan. And uh, today I wanna highlight some of the um, initiatives and projects that are proposed within the business plan um, that are intended to help us further progress towards accomplishing these 10 goals. So starting with our goals around places and spaces, including having neighborhoods where people love to live, we are recommending this year um, an expansion to our Love Where You Live neighborhood planning program. Um, as council will recall, this program was established back in 2019 
with an initial 18 different uh, neighborhood planning districts um, that were intended to um, allow us to work with uh, the stakeholders within those individual neighborhoods, with residents, business owners, church members, and other interested stakeholders to develop specific um, neighborhood plans uh, for uh, the revitalization of uh, our neighborhoods. And so the initial 18 neighborhoods uh, were focused really um, largely around um, our downtown core, um, most of them uh, being in North and East Temple. And it has been a very successful program from my uh, perspective. We have um, largely done three to four uh, neighborhood, new neighborhood plans each year, working through those, uh, the, those original 18 districts. So at this point, um, we would like to propose to council that we uh, take a look at expanding out um, at other areas, particularly in South um, and West Temple, um, some of uh, the older neighborhoods in, that, in those areas. Um, that would benefit from some specific planning. So you can see there, we have completed many of the plans. We have um, three currently underway this fiscal year, Las Cruces, Bird Creek, and Barnhart. And then um, we'll round out the year with Northwest Hills District Neighborhood Plan. We're proposing an addition, additional seven uh, neighborhood planning districts, which would bring the total neighborhood planning district number up to 24. And then we're also proposing the addition of nine strategic, strategic corridors. Right now, um, we only have one corridor that was part of the original 18 districts, and that was the I-35 corridor. We also feel like several um, other corridors are ripe for planning um, and, and making sure that we're preserving um, those important strategic uh, areas of our community and uh, making improvements to them. So you can see there kind of generally uh, what a schedule could look like uh, to begin or to expand out that program uh, into the future. Brim, future is after the six years. That's that's correct. Three of the corridors are not proposed within right. the six year plan, but we have identified them as um, important corridors that we believe we should we, as we add an additional year in the future, we should fund those in FY30. And so going along with um, the actual, uh, the actual uh, adoption and creation of our neighborhood plans, um, you all know that I love a good plan, but more than that, I love a plan that's implemented. And so um, last year, you all approved our Places and Spaces Capital Improvement Program. Um, that is a new CIP program intended to uh, provide funding necessary to implement the projects that are coming out of our neighborhood planning um, district plans, as well as our parks master plan. Um, this is a total of an $80 million capital improvement program. 18 million of those projects are currently underway, uh, recently approved by you all. And so we've got $62 million um, in uh, future projects in the remaining six years of the plan. In 2024, uh, so this is not all of the projects that would be covered by the six-year plan, but these are just the projects proposed for funding in 2024. Um, we would uh, recommend improvements to West Temple Park, Von Rosenberg Park, Walker Park, Colquitt Park, uh, Miller Springs Nature Center, and Gober Recreation Center as well as um, the implementation of the Nettles Park improvements as recommended in the Garden District Neighborhood Planning uh, Master Plan, Storybook Grove as shown in the Downtown District Plan, 14th Street improvements as shown in the Ferguson Park Plan, Avenue D improvements also represented in the Ferguson Park Plan, and then continuing our program for implementing district identification, which is monument signage, street toppers, banners, to help provide that distinct identity for each of the neighborhoods. Um, and we are uh, recommending the next four on the list uh, be implemented in 24, which would include Temple Heights, Las Cruces, Bird Creek, and Barnhart. In addition, we're recommending um, some revamps to um, some of our grant programs, as well as an additional grant program. So education and recreation and community enhancement partnership grants, these are two grant programs that would be available to nonprofit community partners 
to help us accomplish strategic um, initiatives within uh, the strategic plan that we feel like would be best accomplished by a nonprofit partner. So this could be things like home uh, improvement grants. Um, it could be things like school programs, um, uh, any number of different things that we could partner with the nonprofit sector within the community to, to deliver services um, in uh, areas of need. And then um, the third grant program is our neighborhood improvement grants. This is a new uh, program that is coming out of uh, recommendations within the community development program. These grants would be available to individual property owners and business owners within the neighborhood planning districts for exterior improvements, uh, physical improvements to their homes or businesses. So very similar to the strategic investment zone grant program, it would be a matching grant program, reimbursement based, um, but focused on residential and small businesses within our neighborhood planning districts. We're also recommending a grant coordinator and housing resource coordinator to join Nancy's team um, in future years to continue to provide programming in that area. And the continued support for the Temple Revitalization Corporation, which is our recently created um, local government nonprofit that allows us to really focus on real estate um, acquisition and conveyance um, in accordance with our um, neighborhood plans and providing a lot more flexibility and tools um, than we otherwise have. Um, related to the goal um, that we have beautiful spaces and unique experiences, we are recommending the establishment of a parks and recreation maintenance program. So council may recall a couple of years ago, you first approved a similar program around pavement maintenance, where we determined that there was an optimal level of annual investment um, that needed to be made to help ensure that our roadways were well maintained. Um, we feel like a similar program um, in our parks and recreation area would be very helpful so that we can maintain existing parks and recreation systems um, without having to rely on bond uh, program funding. So these would be things like replacing existing playgrounds or different um, amenities within our parks and recreation system. We would start in a very similar way that we did with pavement maintenance, uh, beginning with a $250,000 investment in 24, and then continuing to build upon that until uh, we reach what we believe is an optimal funding level of $1.5 million annually uh, for the replacement of our amenities and assets within our park system. Brian, can you stop one sec? Yes, ma'am. Um, I, I, in looking through this, I, I was a bit confused by this. Does this mean like in 24, it's 250,000 and 25, is it a total of 500,000 or yes, is it? Okay, so each week, year, it's the total that we see. Yes, it's hard to go from zero to 1.5 in a single I operating budget. Yes. But once you have something built into your base budget, it's easier, easier for us to absorb incremental increases. Okay. So that's why we're recommending stepping into the full um, recommended investment in this manner. Thank you. We're also recommending some additional staffing in our parks and recreation department, including a landscape, landscape spray technician, uh, several different uh, additional maintenance workers, a recreation specialist position focused on after school programming, and an assistant golf professional. We're also continuing to recommend our park ranger program in, in future fiscal years that would allow some more enhanced law enforcement uh, presence within our park system. Uh, we continue to recommend um, the uh, master plan be developed for Hillcrest Cemetery in FY24. And then a new recommendation this year is to um, uh, plan uh, to, to develop a master plan for Salmon's Golf Course. So um, as we look, um, Councilmember Long, you've been a big advocate for looking to the future and making sure that we have adequate plans for the expansion of the facility. So um, it is my recommendation that we pursue a master plan so that we know um, what future investments and real estate acquisition um, we need to pursue to uh, maximize the, the future success. Um, I think Jeff course. can give that to you in about an hour and a half. Sounds great. I look forward we'll, to we'll, it. We don't have to work <laughs> on it very long. 
Uh, we're also recommending a little restructure, a little bit of a restructure in our recreation division, uh, making sure that each of our teams have a dedicated manager position um, and some consistency across um, how those um, areas are, are structured. So this would add three new positions uh, to the recreation division um, and do a few reclassifications so that we have uh, managers for each team and consistency in how those um, areas are structured. Also a new recommendation, recommendation this year is the development of an arts and culture master plan. This would allow us to partner with all of the agencies and organizations within our community um, that are focused on providing arts and cultural resources. So think Cultural Activity Center, Temple Civic Theater, Temple College, even, even TISD, um, and really making sure that we have a shared vision and shared plan for the future of how we support and enhance arts and cultural investments within our community. Um, we're also recommending implementation of the recently completed special event strategic plan. So as council will recall, this would add a new um, major um, headliner event um, within our community, a country music festival proposed in the fall would make significant um, investments in our holiday, um, uh, uh, Christmas programming events and programming, um, continue to uh, invest in our air show and see that expand in the future, as well as a reimagined Blumenfest um, and then multiple other uh, supporting events throughout the year to really make sure we have a strong fabric of events going on within our community, both uh, to serve as recreation opportunities for our residents and to attract um, tourism and uh, visitors uh, to our community. We're also recommending um, the continuation and expansion of our Heritage Ar Arts and Tourism Partnership Grants. The, these um, are grants available to nonprofit partners, um, including uh, Cultural Activity Center, Temple Civic Theater, um, organizations like that, that that provide arts programming within um, our community and allows us to support those programs. We're also recommending schematic design for the Central Branch, uh, Central Library Branch uh, be added into the business plan as we come off of just completing our library master plan. Um, which included recommendations for expansion and reimagining what um, our central branch would look like, as well as adding um, additional branch libraries um, in neighborhoods throughout our community. So we are recommending site acquisition for the three um, neighborhood branch libraries that are recommended, um, as well as um, one uh, branch within the six year period would um, be uh, advanced to design construction um, and operation. Um, also in, com uh, in coordination with master plan recommendations, we're recommending the addition of assistant director positions within our library services department, an additional youth services librarian and a facility manager position. Um, in the uh, focus area of communication and collaboration um, and in furtherance of our goal to have open and responsive communication with our community and council, you've been incredibly supportive over the last several years of investments in our communications and marketing team. And I think they've done a fantastic job of really elevating the way that we provide information to our own residents and also the face that we present to the rest of the world about who the city of Temple is and what our quality of life here um, and, uh, is. And so we do have a few additional recommendations in future years, um, nothing in the upcoming year, but uh, a few additions to round out that team. Um, in the focus area of smart growth and around our goal uh, to be a city that supports well-managed growth and development to promote a thriving economy, We've also, um, under your leadership, made significant investments in our development services team over the last couple of years, um, but we do have a few additional positions recommended, a combination building inspector in our upcoming year, and then in a the future year, a planning manager um, and a business navigator position, uh, specifically focused on helping small business 
um, startups um, navigate uh, through the development services process um, in order to establish their business within the city of Temple. We're also um, recommending continued uh, funding and support for our partnership with the Temple Economic Development Corporation for um, incentive negotiation and industrial marketing um, services. Uh, for the goal of infrastructure and systems that support exceptional services and community growth. As Tracy reported to you just a few weeks ago, we once again have the largest capital improvement program um, in the history of our community underway as we speak with over half a billion dollars in active capital improvement programs right now. And when you take into consideration what's to come in the six year plan, we have an additional $534 million in capital improvement program in our future outlook. So we'll talk more specifically about these areas, but I wanted to highlight the significance of that investment um, to what uh, to to our our preparation for growth and our investment in our existing neighborhoods, and also just highlight the fact that with that level of capital improvement investment, uh, we are recommending some additional project management resources, both in the engineering team, which primarily does um, our utility um, and public infrastructure related uh, capital project management. So this would involve an, an additional project engineer in FY24 under Richard's uh, team, and then additional project manager support in 25 and 26 in Belinda's team and facility services, which primarily manages uh, facility and parks related projects for us. And then in FY28, an additional project engineer back in uh, public works as well. She's back up. She's uh -huh. That 534 back up on the bottom there. <laughs> is that over? Is that between now and 28? How many years is that? Yes. That number. 29. Okay. That's that's a lot. Mm -hmm. It is a lot. I was hoping you divide that by 20. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so drilling down a little bit into our uh, mobility capital improvement program, there's $130 million in future projects recommended over the six year uh, planning period. For FY24 specifically, the projects that are recommended include reconstruction of 42nd Street, Little River Road, Hartrick Bluff Road, Poison Oak Road Phase 2. Also the construction of Phase 2 of the Georgetown Railroad project, and then beginning design for Young Avenue and Lower Troy Road reconstruction, Henderson Street um, reconstruction, and MLK Drive Phase 1. We're also recommending continuation of our pavement preservation program. So this is, um, we, we talked a little bit about this when we were talking about parks, but this is a program that um, you all approved back in FY 2022. So this will, 24 will be the third year of investment, bringing um, the total um, to 750,000 in our operating budget for pavement preservation. Um, specifically what you saw happen this, this uh, uh, last uh, few months with the slurry seal um, that, uh, that really, I think was, um, was a really successful program. And then we still, as part of our mobility capital improvement program, have 2.5 million proposed for um, more long-term pavement preservation, such as mill and overlay. Um, so this, this funding is just related to operating um, maintenance like slurry seal. We also have quite a few mobility maintenance crews proposed um, in the upcoming few years. So uh, most of these you've seen before, but one new proposal this year is um, an additional right-of-way crew uh, focused on uh, right-of-way and pavement marking maintenance, um, a street patching crew, a forestry crew, which uh, is our tree trimming crew. Uh, it would, this would add an additional crew. Um, we only have one uh, at this moment. Um, then in 26, an additional right-of-way crew focused on alley uh, maintenance, and then in 27, a sign crew, and 28, an additional street reconstruction crew. In FY24, we're also recommending funding for enhanced transit services um, through our uh, partnership with the Hill Country Transit District. Um, 
I would love the, the district to come and give a very detailed proposal to you all um, in the next meeting or two. But just quickly um, to highlight what this would do is largely implement the recommendations that were made um, in the mobility master plan around transit. It would eliminate fixed route services and replace that with uh, micro transit services, which are door to door services for our citizens, our residents. So um, much more similar to kind of an Uber or Lyft experience um, where you call for a ride through an app or you can, you can still call via phone um, and then you would be picked up at your location and taken directly to your destination. The proposal does still include one fixed route, which would be a connector route between Coppers Cove and Temple um, and allowing uh, continued regional connectivity. Um, for utility capital improvement program, we have $234 million of projects proposed in the next six years. For 24 specifically, um, the project that's on the list is the Temple Belton wastewater plant expansion. And this will be our focus next year as it is a $65 million expansion. So this will be the project for 24. Related to utility services, we do have several um, additional maintenance crews proposed, four in water, three in sewer. Um, we also have four water operators proposed to um, staff the uh, expanded membrane treatment plant um, that's nearing completion, two utility foreman positions, and two additional environmental program techs. As it relates to solid waste, um, lots of routes proposed over the six years, including new residential routes, both garbage and recycling in FY25 and 26, as well as 28 and 29, roll-off routes in 25, 27, and 29, brush and bulk route, an additional route in 25, and additional commercial front load routes in 25 and 28. We're also proposing, continuing to propose the addition of a litter crew um, to the solid waste team um, in FY27. And then some uh, swing driver positions, which just as we continue to add routes, we wanna make sure that we have those uh, swing drivers on board so that when um, primary driver is on leave um, or in training, the route is still able to be covered. Um, a recycling assistant position that will allow us to expand a recycling opportunities to multifamily uh, complexes additional maintenance workers and customer service representative. And then a new proposal for FY29 is a code compliance officer that would be embedded within uh, solid waste and help us focus on um, making sure that uh, illegal dumping um, and other um, issues related to waste management are, um, are being enforced. Uh, for our focus area around public safety, we have a goal of having a safe and healthy community. Um, so several initiatives um, in this area, um, including the expansion of our patrol unit um, to go from an eight district to a 10 district uh, patrol system, as well as to move towards 10 hour shifts um, and just have the patrol resources that we need to serve our community. Um, we are recommending uh, training officers be added to the department as we um, invest in the expansion of our public safety training facility. We want to make sure that we have um, the staffing necessary to implement those training programs. We've got um, several recommendations related to investments in our criminal investigations unit, including an additional property crime detection detective unit. Um, a supervisor for our crime scene um, technicians, um, an additional detective that is focused on electronic um, forensic investigation. We're also recommending the final staffing phase of our violent crime enforcement squad and the expansion of our neighborhood and district community policing program. So all together um, over the next six years, that's 32 additional sworn police officer officer positions and five um, 
uh, five civilians uh, in support of that um, of the department. Uh, we're also recommending additional animal services field officers and shelter technicians, um, including in uh, the upcoming fiscal year as well as future years within the plan. This will allow us uh, the resources we need to um, operate the expanded animal shelter as well as continue to provide field services officers within our community as we continue to experience significant growth. For fire, uh, we are recommending the addition of two new squad units that would be fully staffed. Uh, you can see the apparatus on the right hand side of the screen. That's uh, an example of a squad unit. It's a smaller vehicle than the traditional engine or truck, and it allows us to have an additional response company out of an existing station um, to primarily respond to uh, medical service calls. Um, as uh, council will recall, while we do not provide ambulance transit service, we do provide advanced life support services, and we have paramedics um, in each of our companies. We are the, the first arriving unit uh, for emergency medical services, um, and this is a more efficient way for us to, to provide response um, in, in, the, in many of those situations, and it also makes sure that we have multiple companies out of some of our busiest stations and the stations where we're seeing some significant growth. So squad units, we have already two squad units within our department and we're proposing two more, one to be located in South Temple and one in West Temple. We're also recommending training officers in the fire department, very similar to in police um, as we expand out our public safety training facility. We wanna make sure we have the staffing resources necessary to provide um, excellent training to our department. We're recommending additional resources in our fire marshal's office, including three um, additional deputy fire marshal positions. As a reminder, our, our fire marshals um, are both um, critical in our development process as they do plan review uh, for fire related um, code issues, and they also um, serve a very important role in fire investigations and inspections of uh, facilities to um, ensure um, safety of our community. We're also recommending the establishment of a second response district within the community. So this would add uh, battalion chiefs and driver positions so that we have a battalion chief over um, essentially west part of the community, west of um, I-35 and one over uh, the stations and the companies that are located east of I-35. This is uh, part of the recommendations coming out of a fire master plan um, and ensures an appropriate span of control. Um, and as we have often have multiple major incidents happening at one, at one time within our community, it allows um, a battalion chief to be um, at the scene um, and not having to split their time between two major events. We're also, um, as we're adding additional firefighter staffing, we need to make sure that we're adding some uh, floater positions or some, some swing positions to ensure that we uh, continue to, to meet minimum staffing coverage um, while folks are on leave or in training. Um, we're also recommending, based on the uh, fire master plan, the addition of one, one more uh, person on each ladder truck uh, shift. So we currently have three ladder trucks within um, the department. And as you can imagine, um, a, a ladder truck arriving at a scene has a bit more of a complex setup process. You've got to, in addition to um, laying the hose, um, you, you also are needing to deal uh, with the ladder itself. And so having a four person team versus a three person team is recommended to increase the response time um, of uh, those units. We're also recommending the um, construction, equipping and staffing of fire station number nine, uh, which is recommended as part of the fire master plan in West Temple. This involves the addition of 14 um, uh, new uh, positions, including captains, drivers, uh, and firefighters. So uh, this uh, station is proposed to come online in FY28. 
And um, in case you were wondering, that is a total of 53 additional firefighter positions over the course of the six year plan and seven civilian positions in support of the department. Uh, another uh, part of our capital improvement program is our public safety capital improvement program, which is proposed at an additional $65 million over the six year planning window. For FY24, this includes um, the construction of the public safety training campus classroom, as well as the indoor shooting range and evidence storage building, the replacement of our ARF truck at the airport, um, a fire engine replacement within the fire department, and the squad purchases that we spoke of, of earlier. Also recommending additional code compliance officers um, throughout the plan. And the new um, this year is um, the recommendation to uh, begin design and construction of the Arbor of Hope, um, which Council will recall is the um, centralized um, campus for the provision of uh, services uh, to support um, uh, population experiencing homelessness including consolidated services of substance abuse treatment and mental health resources. Um, the financial plan recommends the first phase of construction, which includes um, group housing uh, shelter for both men and women, as well as um, administration offices uh, that will house uh, the services um, that are needed, congregant kitchen and uh, shower, uh, restroom facilities, and then individual non-congregant um, mini, um, mini shelters um, that uh, are proposed in the first phase. Last uh, focus area is high-performing organization. Um, so our goal uh, of being an organization to con uh, organization committed to performance excellence, we have several um, projects related to making sure that we continue to invest in technology. Um, so this uh, includes the continuation of the implementation of our new records management system, the, the niche um, records management system for our police department, as well as several other investments um, throughout the organization and staffing um, in our technology department to support us as we continue to grow as an organization. Um, we're also recommending significant uh, investment in capital equipment so that we continue to maintain um, our fleet um, that is necessary to provide the services to our community. Um, we are also recommending resources as we continue to invest in high quality facilities. Um, we have um, over 25 million, just over $25 million in facility related projects proposed um, over the six year plan. Um, but we're also proposing a facility maintenance program. Again, this is very similar to the concept around the parks maintenance and the pavement maintenance program that would allow us to do maintenance related uh, replacements and upgrades to our facilities outside of bond funding. So things like carpet replacement, elevator refurbishments, things that we know that need to be done um, on a routine basis. Same structure here, recommending an initial investment of 250,000, working up to a $1.5 million um, optimal annual funding. Uh, around the goal of being an efficient, transparent, and accountable government, um, I'm proud to say that we continue to um, have a wonderful uh, long-term uh, rating of a double A um, that uh, has just been reaffirmed with a stable outlook. Some of the comments from our most recent Standard & Poor's ratings report um, note that uh, this rating is tied to very strong management, our formal long-term financial and capital planning, our strong institutional framework, and a very strong reserves and liquidity. Um, we Everything we've just talked about is wonderful, but if you do not have financial soundness and you do not have the ability to, to, to have um, the financial resources to implement these programs, you can't do it. So um, we are continuing to recommend um, a strong focus on fiscal soundness um, and, uh, and fiscal conservative 
budget this fiscally conservative budgeting um, as well as a few additional resources uh, in future years uh, in uh, finance department to help us to continue to provide strong management of our financial resources. And then I think last but not least, talented and dedicated employees who have a heart for service. Certainly not least, um, you've heard me say a million times that um, we are a service-based organization. Our mission is to provide exceptional service without exception. Um, and the way that we do that is through our employees. We, with very few exceptions, we don't make anything, we don't produce anything. What we do is we provide services to our community. And if we want those services to be exceptional, then we need to be able to attract, retain, train and develop exceptional employees, the best and the brightest. So council knows that um, we've long had a practice of taking a look at um, compensation um, related items for civil service one year, which is our, our sworn police and fire, uh, fighter position, and then general government um, in uh, the other year. This year uh, was civil service. Um, so we do have um, some significant recommendations around compensation for our police and fire uh, fighters. Um, so just as an example for fire, uh, this is uh, our recommendations uh, related to the firefighter position. And um, I would, uh, I'll ask Tara to give a much more detailed presentation at a future workshop. But just to give you a snapshot, you can see the bars um, on the left side of the screen are our peer cities, um, those that kind of in the reddish pink color. That's what their current salaries are at for a firefighter once they've gone through academy and are um, ready to, to be on a truck providing service. Um, the green bar towards the right hand side of the screen is our current. Uh, the blue bar is the median for all of our peer cities and the yellow at the far right of the screen is what we're proposing um, for um, starting salary for the upcoming fiscal year. Um, and then in police, um, as you well know, we um, have many, many vacancies. Um, and so our goal here is to, to really try to um, take every opportunity we can to be the department of choice. Um, again, very similar setup. You have um, on the left-hand side of the screen, the cities, our peer cities, our median, uh, what we are at right now and what we're proposing for um, next year, which is very um, incredibly competitive. So for the annual budget, um, all total, um, the proposed budget comes in at 261.6 million in expenditures for FY 2024. Uh, for general funds, um, the primary sources of revenue include um, sales tax, ad valorem or property tax, as well as solid waste uh, charges. Um, expenditures are largely in personnel. Um, again, we are a service-based operation, so what we do is deliver services through our people as well as operations. Uh, the filed budget is based on an uh, estimated property tax rate of 61.3 cents, which is um, unchanged from our current rate. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. Solid waste rates, you can see um, Temple there uh, compared to our peer cities. As it relates to water and wastewater, um, the vast majority of uh, revenue is from uh, charges for service for water and wastewater. Um, expenditures are uh, in operations, debt and uh, debt service and uh, personnel expenditures. Uh, proposed utility rates, um, you can see there where Temple Falls as it relates to our peer cities. Um, and then just as a reminder, <laughs> the city of Temple does not charge impact fees. So all of these cities that you see here, they, in addition to rates, they also charge, in some cases, very significant per lot impact fees for connecting to the water and wastewater system, both for residential and commercial projects. So all of our revenue is based on rates, none of it on impact fees. Every, every one of those has impact fees. Except Ryan. Good to know. Yes. And, um, 
for our future here. So just a quick reminder of where we came from. We've had some, some time together in both staff and council retreats through the months of February, March, and April. Um, at, we filed our prelim, preliminary budget with you all um, on June 22nd. We're here today on July 6th for the initial uh, presentation, uh, overview presentation of the proposed business plan. Tonight, you do have an action item on your agenda. It's simply to schedule the public hearing on the city's budget. Um, so that's the only decision you're making is to schedule the public hearing. Um, we have opportunities um, through the, the remainder of July and August to have additional city council budget workshop. I do have some topics that I would like to go and uh, that I want to go into a deeper dive with you. But if you also have topics that you're interested in learning more about and having a more detailed presentation, please let me know over the next couple of days and we'll get that set up and scheduled. Um, on July 20th, at your next regular city council meeting, we will have, assuming you schedule it tonight, we will have the public hearing um, on the city's budget. You, um, you will also need to discuss and vote on a proposed tax rate. So recall that that tax rate that the preliminary budget is filed on is a flat rate, no changes from last year. Also recall that we do not receive the certified tax roll until at, at July 25th is the deadline for us to receive it. So once we get that information, there may be some revisions that, um, that we're able to consider. We might be able to bring that rate further down. Um, so what you want to do on July 20th is set the rate at the maximum that you would consider, especially if we don't have all the certified role information. And then when you consider it, when you consider the rate for adoption, you can bring it down, but you can't go up. Um, and then in August um, is uh, the first readings of the uh, approving the tax roll and levying taxes and setting the tax rate. And then on August 17th is your final decision date. You'll have your public hearing on the proposed tax rate, and then you'll be asked to consider the adoption of the annual budget, um, the approval of the tax roll and the uh, tax levy and the final approval of the tax rate. So again, if you all have things you want um, to get more detail about in a, in a future presentation, give that some thought over the next few days and let me know what you're interested in and uh, we'll go from there. Maybe a little longer. That wasn't so bad. Um, now, I always enjoy looking at that difference between sales tax and that loan tax. And it seems like every year that spread just gets wider and wider. Um, yeah, it was at 33%. Yeah. Um, one concern that I always have about that, you know, with that sales tax number being so high. Uh, one thing, obviously, it helps our ad valorem tax, right? I get that, but I just wonder how long that's sustainable, or just you know, based on the overall growth of Texas and living where we do in Texas, that we can just anticipate that that uh, sales tax to at least remain stable, if not continue to grow. Do you have any thoughts, or I mean, you've, you've been doing this a while. Yes, I do. On that? As you will note. Um, when I present the quarterly statements or financial statements, yeah. the, the uh, sales tax compared to budget, I think we're gonna end the year, I think it's forecasting around 4.5 million over budget. Because, wow. uh, and that's happened the last two years because our conservative budgeting practice, you know, we're thinking this growth is not, this double digit is not going to continue, but it still continues. So we're always, a, at, and even prior to that, we budgeted conservative where we were trying to like to hit it around a million dollars over budget. Mm -hmm. So it allows you to adjust. So it's not gonna be a year, you forecasted at this and we're way under. Right. We, we intentionally forecast, try to under. Yeah. And, but it's the last two to three years because of the, Double digit growth. I mean, we we missed it. And Deme also in there. Right. And to me, yeah, I'd rather. Deme, I mean, there wasn't a decrease. But we didn't know. You know no, no, we I understand. Started. But that because yeah. I think we 
not a dollar that pandemic year. I think maybe we even budgeted maybe eighty percent of the previous year. Yes, we did. Right, right. We 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 backed off because like right. this, you know, the economy slowing down, we're right. in a recession. And even with the uh, and we consistently watch the like the Temple Economic Indicator Report. There's things we're consistently watching in the economy, and if we ever needed to adjust during the year, we could. We would too. Mm -hmm. But increased growth means increased purchasing. So even as growth stabilizes to a degree, the previously increased growth will continue to buy. Correct. But again, is it? Uh, I think. Are you talking about on the on the city's expense side, or are you talking about on the sales tax I'm side? Sorry, sales city's tax revenue side. side. Yeah, and recall too, Temple. Um, Temple has a more diver diversified base, right. just like they do with their property sure. tax, after the and taxes. And recessions, we're not as volatile. It's not all based on consumer spending. It's, right. No, not at all. It's, um, more a lot of building and uh, industry and different. Sure. It's. I think we're like. Like with Georgetown and Waco, they're like 75% retail, and we were like 50, 60%. I mean, mm. a lot less retail. So we're not really as good. That's, that's we're not really as good for us yeah. because a lot of our purchasing, residential purchasing, is our retail purchasing is not happening in town, unfortunately. Amazon, the way it works. Oh, sure. <laughs> yes. And we get the, whatever yeah. that, that law was called. Right. The tax base. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, pardon? Wayfair. Yes. Yeah. And we really are so fortunate that we're not like some of our neighbors where they're just a bedroom community. Yes. And really dependent on you know, those households. We're very diverse. So, very fortunate. The um the penny and a quarter shift from M and O to INS, is that for to account for inflation and borrowing costs? Uh, the shift is, you'll recall, two to three years ago with the Senate bill that compressed. Yeah, uh, three and a half percent. We're at, we're at the three and a half percent. Uh, and with the INS, it supports some of the new capital projects to that increase there. Okay. I think that I, um, which, that, Go ahead. No, no, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, 1.25 cents for what it's funding. We're combining that with growth in the tax base. Right. That's pretty powerful mm -hmm. that you can do what you can do with, with that increase. Yeah. It was a couple of meetings ago when I said, you know, it, um, cities are never, I think the city of Temple is less far behind than other cities, right? Like we're always, far, we're always, I think cities tend, tend to run behind because you have to you have to plan well, and that takes time, et cetera. But I think everything in the budget as presented is uh, not only defensible, but needed, right? There's, there's, there there are, are neat items that set this community apart in that budget, but at the same time, they're all needed items, and there's, there's not a lot of uh, shiny objects right there's not a lot of fluff it's it's needed stuff but done well um and to me that's that's exciting to think that versus other communities that we're able to afford some of those things so kudos to staff and the six-year plan and that does make a difference speaking of kudos tracy's team does so much work to get us to this point um, so please, uh, I know you do appreciate her, but please know how much work that she and her team do team. Um, to be able to allow us to present something like this to yeah. you with a flat tax rate or, you know, hopefully something that we can come back once we get the certified role and, and reevaluate. Re and then um, just, I would be remiss if I didn't mention two people specifically Jennifer Emerson and Sherry Pover, they spend so much time on this um, effort and they are so passionate and so qualified and we're very blessed to have them um, 
in our organization and in, in the leadership positions that they're in. Um, and I was I had a conversation yesterday with, with the folks and, you know, someone said, how, how can you do all of that? And like, because we've got a great, we've, we've got a well managed, very, very well financially managed organization. And, um, and that, that's, that is the foundation of why we can provide these services to our community. I'd like to add to that too. I think the finance staff is online too. Um, all the department heads, yes, they work lots, so, of time. lots of time and work well with with the finance staff and making all of these things work. Too. And Tracy, we know you were under extreme pressure because of your mother's illness at the penultimate moment during this. We're so glad she's doing okay. Thank you. And again, staff, a great staff went through that. Thanks for all the prayers. Keep my extra money. A little help on payroll. Good. Well, I think I've, I say this every year, but it's fun to be on council in this town. We're not worried about how to fill pile. Right? <laughs> right, Kenny? <Kimmy? Kimmy. laughs> but, but we can pass it off and let you in. Kenny, don't worry. We got you. Very good. Well, as always, thanks to staff. Um, all good work. We just get to vote yes, right? <laughs> Which is nice. So appreciate the budget books. Um, are they a little, a little earlier than you for this? Maybe I'm just paying more attention. <laughs> yeah, take some time. Council, go through it. Be sure that your pet project was addressed. <laughs> and uh, and uh, we'll move forward. Is there anything else? Are we gonna finish? Tim, uh, can you hear me? Oh. For your new four, yes. wonderful news. I was glad to see that online. We just graduated the academy and we just hired six. Six? Oh, Did you say six? For a total of yeah. 10 or a total no. of six? <laughs> no, we have a, it's a total of 10. Okay. But we're still down significant. Amount. Oh, of course. Of course. Yeah. Four came out of the academy, six are going in. Oh, I got it. I got it. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Congratulations. Mike? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Um, I just wanted to mention the back in the presentation, uh, Brent talked about the uh, the little smaller trucks for, for running out to smaller fire calls and with paramedics and such. Um, I appreciate that. I've been concerned for a long time about us running big fire trucks for every little thing. And we just happen to see um, they're basically doing what we're proposing here in London. We saw that the other day and talked to our driver was familiar with it. So uh, I like that a lot. Thank you. I'll save you. Mike, are you in a car or on the plane? I'm in my hotel room. Oh, with a round window. Uh, no, it's a light, a lamp. I'm in a... Uh, um, Scotland, Eden, Edinburgh, Scotland, in a hotel. When are you coming home? <laughs> we gotta leave at three and at four in the morning. Right. I'll be home tomorrow about to Austin about three thirty, I think. Did you watch the king yesterday with the bagpipes? We were here. We actually got stuck in a line and the king and the prince and all that passed us in their cars. We saw the whole thing. Very cool. Good, 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 good. On accident, right. but. Thank you. Oh, sorry, Mark. That. Uh, that's it. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. It is uh, 440, and I will adjourn this meeting, this workshop, and I'll see everybody downstairs here in a few minutes. Thank y'all.